a very good evening uh, to all the brothers in christ uh, so today is a very important subject uh, so i request everybody to please concentrate and listen and uh, uh, kindly see the scriptures which i are showing to you this is a very very important class uh, so i request everybody to please kindly make notes of it also and and if you have still any doubts uh, you can definitely clarify we can uh, definitely go through the all your questions so today our subject uh, is based upon the two symbols which our lord jesus gave here lord jesus uh, never told us to do anything uh, outward uh, demonstration you see he told only about uh, two things one is baptism and there is a uh, lord's uh, memorial supper so these are the two only outward symbols which our lord jesus told us to celebrate and do this uh, so today we are going to study the lord's memorial supper in the coming days we will be studying about the lord's uh, baptism so the lord's memorial supper when do we need to take uh, that's the major question you see when do we need to take uh, the memorial supper the bread and the wine you see the committing the lord's death uh, when do we need to take uh, should we take uh, monthly ones weekly ones or daily when should we take it peter brother do you have any idea when do we take it when should we take it i think there is no not any specific day okay uh, so not any specific day good okay good binod brother any suggestions of yours any view brother binod okay but saiju saiju brother okay stephen brother any idea about yours generally it is practiced in the first uh, sunday of the month very good so see first sunday of the month first uh, week of the month you see generally they participate but if you see in the roman catholic they do it every day you see in some places they do it whenever they gather that means weekly once so which is correct of course all the three cannot be correct you see all the three which is correct so we need to study from the scriptures so about the lord's memorial it is given to us in first corinthians 11 chapter verse 20 to 30 So let us read this verse one by one and see what does uh, Apostle Paul say in these verses. Okay, uh, Stephen, brother, can you read First Corinthians eleven chapter, verse twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three? One minute, brother. One First Corinthians eleven. Hmm. Okay, from twenty to twenty three. Hmm. when we come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper for in eating every one take it before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken what have you not houses to eat and to drink in mm. or this be the church of god and shame them that have not what shall i say to you shall i praise you in this i praise you not for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread okay good thank you brother so here apostle paul gives a explanation of detail explanation of the lord's uh, supper she is clearly telling uh, the corinthian church that uh, your gathering here is uh, not uh, to eat or drink because uh, in the corinthian church they were celebrating uh, you see the lord's uh, memorial they were commemorating the lord's memorial as if eating uh, you see uh, a supper a food uh, you see huh? so it was like uh, one rushing upon another 
to eat and drink and quench their thirst and hunger. So, Apostle Paul clearly condemns them, saying, See, have you not come here to eat the Lord's Supper? But uh, in eating, one goes before the other to eat the Lord's uh, Supper. If you are really angry, if you really want to drink, uh, why don't you go and do it in the home? You are in doing such a way, you are insulting the Church of God. So, Apostle Paul condemns uh, the Corinthian church. And uh, next, uh, he goes on to tell what is the correct procedure of uh, commemorating the Lord's memorial. It is not like eating a just ordinary, you see, uh, meal. It is a very, very important thing. Therefore, he says, you see, the thing which uh, I received is from the Lord. Now read verse 24 to 26, brother. Uh, brother, please continue. Verse 24 to 26, uh, Stephen, brother. Oh, yes, brother. 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, you also he took the cup when he supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show, show the Lord's death till he come. Thank you, brother. So next, uh, Apostle Paul clearly tells what actually Jesus taught him. You see, in the night, uh, in the same night in which uh, Jesus was betrayed, First, Jesus took the bread and broke and gave it to the disciples. And next, he took the cup, you see, and he gave it to the disciples and told to drink and eat all of it. Saying, do this in remembrance of me. You see, and next, what does Apostle Paul continue? Verse 27 to 31, brother. Huh? Twenty-seven to thirty-one. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we were judged ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, carry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation. Thank and you, the brother. rest, Thank I set in order when I come. Thank you, brother. So, Welcome. here, Apostle Paul tells, uh, see, this bread represents the Jesus' body, and this blood, wine represents Jesus' blood. Therefore, whosoever eateth this bread and drinketh this cup in an unworthy manner, that means what? You can't just eat and drink it whenever you want. You can't do it whenever you want. You see, there is a procedure. This verse clearly tells, doing in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, dear brethren, it is our duty to study about the Lord's memorial when we have to do. Whether we have to do daily whether we have to do weekly, whether uh, we have to do usually monthly ones, which is correct. Because Apostle Paul clearly says, if you are doing it in an unworthy manner, which is not pleasing to the Lord, which is unscriptural, you see, it is uh, uh, bringing damnation upon ourselves. And uh, Apostle Paul uh, tells uh, that uh, let every man examine himself. So each and every person, has to examine himself is what not uh, ourselves. 
you should examine from the scriptures, study from the scriptures. From there only we can examine ourselves whether we are doing it proper or not. Because he that uh, drinks and eats uh, unworthily drinks uh, damnation upon himself. Uh, you see, therefore, if we judge ourselves and correct ourselves, uh, we would not be judged of the Lord. Okay. Now, therefore, let us study why our Lord uh, gave this bread and wine. You see, first uh, he gave the bread, next he gave the wine. Why? Why did he not first give the wine, next uh, he should have given the bread? Why did he not do so? Dear brethren, you see, let us read what actually Jesus said. Okay. Luke 22nd chapter, verse 19 to 20. Uh, Saiju brother, you are there? Saiju? Okay. Uh, Binod brother, can you read Luke 22, 19 to 20? Okay, sir. Uh, Luke 22, 19 to 20. Hmm. And he took bread and gave, gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament, is my blood, which is said of you. Very good, brother. So, first thing, Jesus took the bread. He clearly said, This is my body. You see, which is given for you. No. How, how is it uh, Jesus' body? Jesus clearly said in John 6, 51, that I am the living bread which came down from heaven. You see? And he that eateth this bread shall never die. So, Jesus gave his body as a life for the whole world. You remember the class of the ransom? You see, through Adam, the sin and death, the condemnation came upon this whole world. So similarly, through second Adam, you see, our Lord Jesus Christ, everybody are going to get salvation. You see, different. so that body, Jesus offered as a sacrifice so that entire mankind might be saved. So and Jesus said, the bread which I give as a life for the whole world is my body. So Jesus' body is sacrificed for the whole world. So by the death of Jesus, what are we getting? You see, we are getting justification. You see, we are seen in this uh, divine plan chart. Uh, you see, where the whole mankind are in death condition, we are also in death condition by accepting Jesus Christ. In faith, we are justified in the sight of God. Uh, by faith, not by literal, uh, you see, this one, but by faith, we are considered as uh, not sinners. Uh, we are considered as, uh, you see, huh? Huh? A sinless person in the sight of God. This is by faith. This justification we receive only by believing in Jesus. I read Romans 5.1. Uh, Romans 5.1. Uh, Emmanuel brother, can you read Romans 5.1? Emmanuel brother, you're there? Okay. Peter brother, you're there? Can you read? Okay. Uh, uh, read, uh, brother. Uh, please. Romans faith, 5, and, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you see, we are being justified by faith. You see? And we have peace with God. Through Lord Jesus Christ, it is only because of the sacrifice of Lord Jesus that we are peace with God. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, we are justified by faith. Uh -huh. Now read Romans 8.1. Okay. See from the read. Peter with the read. Okay. Kindly Hello. open the Bible, keep the Bibles ready. So as soon as I mention, please unmute and read because it's a very lengthy class. We need to tell so many points. So please be attentive and immediately read the scriptures. Okay, Roman 8 1. Therefore, 
Peter brother, please read. Okay, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ, who talk not after the flesh but after the spirit. See, therefore it says there is no condemnation. God doesn't treat us as sinners because God sees us through Jesus Christ and considered us as sinless person. So this justification we are received only because of the death of Jesus on the cross. Okay. Now the second thing what we receive is what you see the second thing Jesus gave was the wine. What does the wine represent? Jesus clearly said this is my blood shed for you. Now what does the blood represent? You see Jesus mentions you see while giving the law God had clearly told that you can eat the flesh but you should never eat the flesh with the blood because what is there in the blood? Life is there it seems. Read Genesis 9.4. Stephen, brother, read Genesis 9.4, brother. Genesis 9.4. Yes. 4. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. See? And sure, you shall not eat. Because, because, because will I require, thank you. At the hand of peace will I require it. At the, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother. Thank you, Stephen, brother. We'll just read that only particular verse and uh, concentrate, brother. One by one, we'll go. Thank you. So, it flesh, is. Okay. But flesh with the life thereof. Thank you, Which brother. is the blood of shall you not eat. So, here God had given the law that the flesh with the blood should not be eaten because life is there in the blood. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, life of Jesus. You see, what did Jesus say? Let us read John 6, 53 to 56. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, you there? Emmanuel, brother? Yes, brother. Can John you? 6. 53 to 56, brother. 53 to 56. Okay, it's written as it. And then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Mm. Who's eaten my flesh and drinketh my blood mm. hath eternal life, and mm. I will raise him up at the last day. Mm. For my flesh is meat indeed, mm. and my blood is drink indeed. Very good. He so, that eateth my. So here Jesus clearly said, "You see, my flesh is meat indeed, my blood uh, is drink indeed." So eating uh, the, you see, uh, body of Jesus and drinking the blood of Jesus means what? Uh, many of the disciples thought this is a literal thing, and many walked away. You see. If they would have uh, questioned God, we should have uh, questioned Jesus Christ, Lord, how is it possible? How can we eat you? How can we drink you? Definitely Jesus would have given a clear clarification. Here, Jesus was not mentioning literally about eating uh, somebody's flesh or drinking somebody's, uh, you see, blood. We have seen, you see, the body means, uh, you see, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ uh, through which uh, we are justified. And the blood means what? In the blood there is life. And how was the life of Jesus Christ? You see, Jesus' life was a sacrificial life. He never lived a selfish life. He lived a life which is full of sacrifice, dedicated to God. You see, read Ephesians 5.2. Uh, Binar Buddha, can you read Ephesians 5.2? Okay, sir. Ephesians 5.2. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet smelling savor. Mm. Amen. You see, huh? walk in love even as Christ also loved us and he has given himself as an offering, as a sweet uh, 
smelling uh, savor sacrifice to god you see that was the walk of life uh, that was the life of jesus a life of sacrifice uh, which was really pleasing to god now partaking of that blood means what uh, we need to walk the same life uh, we need to have the same life uh, in us uh, you see a life which is sacrifice read romans 12 1 Romans 12, 1. Peter, brother, can you read Romans 12, 1, brother? Okay, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your responsible service. Mm, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You see? So, sacrifice means what? Uh, you see, sacrifice means... Uh, partaking of the you see sufferings of christ uh, partaking of the sacrificial life of christ you see jesus said now if any man wants to be my disciple let him deny himself carry the cross and follow me same conditions dear brethren this was actually the life of jesus therefore this cup uh, doesn't mean a literal cup uh, this cup is a cup of experience the experiences which God had given to Jesus, you see, and which uh, Jesus sacrificed, uh, which Jesus suffered uh, to please the Lord. Uh, you remember, you see, the mother of James and John, they came and questioned Jesus Christ, uh, you see, saying, uh, uh, Lord, uh, please give my two sons to sit on the left hand and right hand. Uh, you see, but what did Jesus say? Jesus said, you see, it is not in my hands. Uh, but it will be given to whom one who are able to drink of the same cup which I am able to drink. Read Matthew chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read only those verses? Matthew chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. On the screen, okay. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit the one on the right hand and the other on the left in thine kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Ah, see here, you see, Jesus answered them saying, Are you able to drink of the same cup which I am able to drink? Here, Jesus was not mentioning uh, about the literal cup because it was the same cup that everybody drank. What is so difficult about drinking of the same cup which Jesus drank? Here, Jesus was saying about the cup of experience, the cup of ignominy, the cup of death, the cup of sufferings, the cup of pain and cup of sorrow. This is what Jesus was actually telling, you see, are you able to drink of this cup uh, which I am able to drink? Remember, you see, this is clearly shown in where, where uh, you see, uh, the servant of the high priest came to arrest Jesus, you see. Now what happened? Uh, Peter took a knife and immediately chopped off his ears. What did Jesus say to Peter? Huh? Jesus said to Peter, put thy sword into thy, you see, said that. Uh, the cup which my father had poured unto me, shall I not drink it? You see, read John 18, 11, brother. John 18, 11. Uh, Binod, brother, can you read, brother? Okay, sir. Uh, John 18, 11. Then, uh, then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the seat. The cup which my Father had given me, shall I not drink it? See, the cup which my father has given to me. What cup had God given to Jesus? This is not a literal cup. This is the cup of suffering. You see, the cup of experience, the bitter experiences which God had reserved to Jesus. This is the cup which Jesus was referring. Dear brother, remember in Garden of Gethsemane, what did Jesus prayed, Father. If it by thy will, let this cup pass away from me. Yet not my will, but let thy will be done. So here, Jesus was not speaking of the literal cup. Again, here, it was a cup of experience. Read 
Matthew 26, 39. Matthew 26, 39. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read, brother? Okay. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as the well. Very good, brother. You see, so Jesus asked, to let this cup pass from me. What is this cup which Jesus requested to pass from him? Not the cup, literal cup, not the literal cup. It's cup of experience. You see, the cup of bitter experience, cup of sufferings. This is what Jesus requested. Yet not my will, let thy will be done. Hence, when Jesus gave these two symbols, you see, one is the bread and the wine. The bread represents the justification which we receive through Jesus and the wine represents the sufferings which we need to partake of Jesus. So, dear brethren, these two things were given means uh, this is the condition of the gospel. If any man wants to be a disciple of Jesus uh, and go attain the heavenly salvation, the terms and conditions now is that, uh, you see, you need to, you see, receive justification and suffer for Christ. After believing Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. But that is not sufficient. Once our sins are forgiven, we need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice and partake of the sufferings of Christ. This is the condition through which we can attain heavenly salvation. Read Philippians 1.29. Philippians 1.29. Stephen brother, can you read Philippians 1.29? One minute brother. You can read from the screen also, brother, if you are able to. No, it is not there. Oh, yeah, sorry. For unto you, it is given in the belief, on in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. See, it is not only to believe on him, but to suffer for his sake. If we just take bread, that is not sufficient. Bread along with wine is important. Just believing in Jesus is not sufficient. Partaking in his sufferings is also very important. This is the condition of the gospel age. Therefore, remember what did Apostle Paul say? You see, I am very glad to partake of the afflictions which are left behind by Christ. You see, read Colossians 124. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Colossians 124? Colossians 1.24 hmm. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the affections of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Ah, you see, who now rejoice in my suffering uh, uh, for you. Fill up uh, that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. Uh, you see, Christ uh, has left a little bit of sufferings for us. Uh, that cup, wine is left. Told everybody drink it off. So it is passed on. Each and every church member has to partake. It means what? We need to partake of their sufferings. This is the real meaning of the cup and the wine. Wine and the, you see, bread. You see, many people, they misunderstand and take, oh, we need to partake. Why? Huh? If you are partaking, all our sins will be forgiven. Or else will become sick. You see, will become weak or will die. You see? So, some people take it to cleanse their sins, uh, to make them purify it. You see? For the forgiveness of sins, uh, dear brethren, for the forgiveness of sins, uh, huh? what is required? Uh, you see? Uh, is uh, uh, the partaking of bread and wine required? No. For our forgiveness of sins, death of Jesus is sufficient. That itself is once uh, one time sufficient. It is not required to repeat it again and again. Read Hebrews 7.27. Peter, brother, can you read Hebrews 7.27, brother? Okay. Who need not daily as those high priests to offer uh, of sacrifice for uh, first for his own sin and then for the people's for his he, he did one. When he offered of himself. Very good. See, 
who need not daily as i priest to sacrifice again and again this he did once for all by offering up himself once for all jesus sacrifice is sufficient brother there is no need to repeat some people tell no brother see huh? when we came to jesus you see what happened we accepted jesus so all our past sins you see before accepting jesus for that one jesus died on the cross so all our sins are forgiven but what about the sins uh, which we commit after accepting jesus uh, you see so jesus has to die again you see uh, now can we crucify him again and again no but the bread and the wine that represents his body that is there by breaking it uh, again and again whenever we want uh, it is like uh, you see uh, jesus dying for us uh, for our sins and cleansing us of all our sins uh, dear brother brother you see everybody takes uh, this one uh, dear brother huh? so therefore they use it whenever they want because verse says no as of a new drink you are showing the lost death till he come so so some people they take it monthly but some people take it weekly some people take it uh, daily because that verse is there na huh? first corinthians 11:26 brother first corinthians 11:26 sir stephen brother First Corinthians eleven twenty six. Can you read? Yes. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till He come. So as often as you take, uh, you are showing the Lord's death. So whenever they want, uh, you see they take it. Uh. Dear brethren, this is not what actually Apostle Paul said. He said, "Be careful." don't do it whenever you want because whenever you're doing it it actually signifies his death so be very careful in taking it it has to be done in a very very you see holy manner in a proper way you see therefore which is correct monthly weekly or daily what does the bible say you see this is called as the lord's memorial supper correct no you see apostle uh, uh, paul also said in first corinthians uh, This is eleventh chapter, huh? You see, the Lord's memorial supper. You are all gathered here to take the Lord's supper. Okay, Lord means what? Uh? Jesus Christ. Memorial means remembrance. Supper means what? Uh? You see, huh? Supper means what? Uh? You see, what is the time we take supper? Morning or evening after sunset? Late evening. Huh? Ah, see, supper means what? Uh? A time period between six pm to eight pm is called supper. See, early in the morning we eat breakfast. No, breakfast means what? Ah, night would have had uh, food, dinner. Ah, uh, from there to morning, nearly almost uh, eight to twelve hours, nothing is there. So it was like fasting. And early morning we we are breaking the fast. That is called as breakfast. You see, so early morning we are taking the breakfast. Then afternoon. we eat now that is called as what lunch the night again we have dinner but what is this supper this is something between the lunch and something between the dinner after sunset this is called as a lord's memorial supper now you tell me what time do the people commemorate in the all the churches what time do they do do they do in evening or do they doing in morning Tell me, do they do in morning or evening? In the daytime. In the daytime. How is it scriptural, dear brethren? See what Apostle Paul says. First Corinthians eleven twenty three, brother. First Corinthians eleven twenty three, brother. For well, I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Ah, same night. Underline, not in the morning. You see, now nobody takes in the night. They take in the morning only. Yeah. What did the apostle Paul say? Quoting the Jesus. This is actually what Jesus did. When did Jesus celebrate? Did he celebrate early in the morning? Ah, or is a mid afternoon or midday? Ah, no. Read. Look twenty two twenty, brother. Look twenty two twenty also, brother. Likewise. Also, the cup after supper, saying, "This cup is the new testament in my blood. 
which is shed for you. Ah, likewise, the cup after supper. So it is supper, not before that one, dear brethren, not in the morning. Therefore, Apostle Paul condemning this one, correcting this one only tells, don't you know that uh, this is the Lord's uh, supper. Hence, uh, you need to do it in a proper way. Or else, uh, you will be bringing damnation upon yourself. You can't do whenever you want, dear brethren. You see, therefore, some people tell, no brother, uh, there are scriptures in the Bible where uh, people celebrated uh, whenever they want. Uh, even weekly, monthly, uh, daily also they did. Uh, and they quote so many scriptures. Now let us consider those scriptures also, when this has to be taken. Huh? Okay. Read Acts 2nd chapter 42 verse. Uh, Imanir brother, can you read Acts 2 42? Two. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. See, breaking of bread and prayers. Several tell, brother, you are clearly given a brother. They continued uh, breaking of bread and prayers. Now read verse 46, brother. When did they do it? And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and Singleness of heart. Aha, uh -huh. the continuing daily. Aha, uh -huh, brother, they did daily, brother. Breaking the bread, you see. So, uh, finished, brother. So, daily we can do it. But, dear brethren, what is actually Apostle uh, here uh, speaking about? Uh, this is speaking about the Lord's memorial. Uh. No, no, no. This is never speaking about the Lord's memorial. This is speaking about the casual daily bread which they eat for a meal. Where is it given? Read verse 46. It is given there clearly. Read again, brother. <laughs> to 46. Hmm. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Where did they break the bread? In house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and single of heart. Dear brethren, this is what they ate. They ate the meal, not the Lord's memorial. Because here only bread is given, now wine is mentioned at all. Because this was the meal. This was not the Lord's memorial at all. So daily they did means what? Daily they did what? Eat food. Daily we eat. No? This is what they did, dear brethren. This is not the Lord's memorial. Some people tell, brother, weekly we can take. Because Apostle Paul mentions in Acts 27. Let us read that one also. Acts 20, verse 7, brother. Acts chapter 20, verse 7, brother. Amen, brother. Can you read? No. Acts 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Ah, you see, they gathered on the first day of the week. You see, not to break the bread. So, therefore, brother, every week they can do. No problem. First day of the week can be done. Not an issue. Huh? Dear brethren, actually, all this incident is not speaking about the Lord's memorial because only bread is given, no wine is given at all. This is speaking about the general meal which people of uh, Israel eat. Now, how do the people of Israel eat? Israel people had a custom. You see, whenever they ate, they ate as a family. And the family head also always has to offer a prayer and break the bread and give it to everybody. Then only everybody will start eating. This is what the Israel people used to do. This is what Jesus also did. Remember when Jesus fed the 4,000, 5,000? How did he feed? He just did not give the bread like that only. He prayed to the Lord, broke the bread and gave it to everybody. Dear brethren, so here it was a casual daily meal which they ate Day by day, you see, into going to each and every houses, uh, you see, they offered prayers and ate. So, and uh, why did they uh, eat on the first day of the week? Uh, you see, correct now? Yeah, daily okay, but first day of the week, why did they eat? Uh, day of the ran. You read this incident uh, that is given in Luke 24 chapter later, okay, from verse 13 to 17 and uh, till verse 30. Here, Jesus was uh, resurrected. But uh, he did not show to the disciples that he was resurrected. You see, and Jesus appeared to them uh, when two were walking to Emmaus. So that time, you see, 
uh, the two persons who were walking to Emmaus, they could not recognize Jesus at all because uh, their eyes were, uh, you see, could not recognize Jesus. Uh, then, see what happens. Read uh, Luke 24, brother. Uh, Binar, brother, can you read Luke 24, chapter? Luke 24, chapter 15 and 16, brother. Uh, 15 and 16. Okay, mm. sir. 15. Okay, sir. Sorry for that. Mm. And they talked together of the these uh, things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they uh, communed together as regions, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. See, and they did not know Jesus at all, but to everybody walking together. Ultimately, a discussion began. Jesus began to ask, why are you all sad? And uh, two of the persons were told, but, uh, oh, you don't know Jesus in Nazareth. He died and on the cross. And Jesus began to explain from the scriptures about himself. Read um, verse 25 and 26, brother. Huh? Okay, sir. Then he said unto them, O fool and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoke, spoken, hmm. ought not Christ to have suffer these things and to enter into his glory hmm. and beginning uh, at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself ah, they... things concerning himself Jesus began to explain about himself now what happened slowly you see and the place came Jesus pretended as if he wants to go further but when the disciples compelled him Jesus also joined them for dinner. Now, there what happened? Read, brother. Verse uh, 31, brother. Huh? Verse uh, 1 minute. 30 and 31, brother. Huh? 31? Hmm. 30. Verse 30 and 31, both. Same chapter, verse 30 as well as 31, brother. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Ah, you see? There what happened? Uh, huh? Jesus sat, everybody sat. Jesus took the bread, prayed, and broke the bread and gave it to everybody. Immediately when Jesus did this thing, what happened? Their eyes were opened. They were able to recognize Jesus. How? Because the same way Jesus was breaking the bed, here also Jesus broke the bed in the same way. They clearly understood this is our master, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, when did this happen? Read uh, Luke 24, 1 brother. Uh, Binar brother, can you read Luke 24, 1 brother? Okay, sir. Luke 24, 1. Uh, now upon the first day of the week. Ah, okay. This is the first day of the week. So, first day of the week, Jesus was resurrected. And this is how he showed to the disciples. Now, you tell me, which is the first day of the week? We have got seven days in a week. Now, which is the first day of the week? Hey, oh, nobody knows, sir. Which is the first day of the week? Okay. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday or Monday? Sunday. Sunday. Monday. Not Monday. Not Monday. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Correct. You see, first day of the week is actually Sunday. Which is the last day of the week then? Saturday. Saturday is the last day of the week. So, for the people of Israel, Sabbath was on Saturday. You see? Hence, leave was given, you see, they had to rest and meditate upon the law. You see, but uh, today, we have all the churches, uh, all the worship, Sunday worship, is when? Sunday, not Saturday. How? Why? Because 
Jesus was resurrected on Sunday. And how did he came to know to the disciples that he was resurrected? It was by breaking the bread. You see, dear brethren, hence, you see, to remember Jesus' resurrection, all the Christians used to gather on Sunday. Slowly what happened? You see, Saturday changed over to Sunday. You know, during the Roman Empire, when everybody got converted to Christianity, slowly everybody began to gather on, you see, to Sunday to remember the Lord's the resurrection. So since then what has happened? You see, slowly Sunday became leave, Sunday became the weekend, and Monday became the first day of the week. But actually, as per the scriptures, Sunday is the first day of the week. Now, you see, we read now. Huh? Those verses, Acts 2nd uh, chapter 42, 46, that was a regular meal. And Acts 27, first day of the week, they gathered together to break the unleavened bread. That was to remember that Jesus uh, was resurrected. How he was made visible to the disciples that he was resurrected, it is through the breaking of the bed. In that remembrance, they gathered on the first day of the week, who need to break bread, no communion at all. Here you see, wine is not mentioned at all. Remember clearly, this was done only to remember Jesus' resurrection. But what did Apostle Paul say? Doing the communion, you see, doing the memorial, was to remember not his resurrection. It was to remember his death. Correct now? Huh? 1 Corinthians 11.26. Read. Let us read once again. Peter Buddha, please read. 1 Corinthians 11.26. For as often as I eat this bread and drink this cup, I do so the Lord's death till he come. Lord's death till he come. Lord's death underline not Lord's resurrection. You see, now you tell me, when do we remember somebody's death? There is a death anniversary, you know, in your place also, Nepal also is there, sure. Huh? When do we remember somebody's death anniversary? Do we remember monthly? Do we remember weekly? Do we remember daily? Tell me, when do we remember somebody's death? Peter, when do we remember? Yearly, once a year. Once a year. Peter, brother? Yearly, and <laughs> huh? yearly, 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 winner brother. When do we remember somebody's death? Yes, once a year, once a year. So, similarly, Jesus' death also has to be remembered only yearly, once not monthly, not weekly, not daily. Okay, so is it given in the Bible? Yes, it is given in the Bible. That Jesus' death should be remembered with the communion only once a year. Where is it given? Read. You see? Huh? Read all these verses. You see? Uh, look. Uh, uh, 22nd chapter, verse 7 and 8. Look. 22nd chapter, 7 and 8. Uh, Stephen Brother, can you read? Luke 27, 22, 7 and 8. Mm. Then came the day of unleavened bread mm. when the Passover must be, must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. See, here the disciples prepared the Passover. Passover was prepared. You see, that we may eat. You see, and Jesus actually celebrated that Passover. You see, the new Passover, the bread and the wine. You see, read Luke 22, 15 also, brother. Luke 22, 15th verse also, brother. And they went and found as he had said unto them. Brother, Stephen, and, brother, 22nd yes. chapter, 15th verse. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need to open it up. Okay, somebody else can read. Look, 22-15. Emmanuel, brother, uh, Peter, brother. 
and he say, said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Ah, with desire have I desired to eat this Passover with you. So what Jesus actually you see, did was the Passover. You see, the new Passover rules, that is what we have to do. You see, now you tell me, people of Israel, when did they celebrate Passover? Monthly, yeah. daily. Yeah. Yearly ones, read 1 Corinthians 5.7. 1 Corinthians 5.7, brother. Emmanuel, brother. Now. Rock you out, therefore, the old, old living, that it may be a new lamb. As a are on live, live in it for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. She for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So underline so Jesus is a Passover lamb, Jesus died as a Passover lamb. So when do we need to celebrate it? It shall be done yearly. Uh, you see, uh, Jewish calendar, no, uh, which is the beginning of the year. When did the people of Israel celebrate the Passover? You see, which is the beginning of the year? Huh? Which is the beginning of the year? We have a calendar, no? Which is the beginning of the year? Nisan. Huh? Nisan. Nisan. Peter, brother, which is the beginning of the year in calendar? January. January. Huh? But Stephen, brother, is saying Nisan. So let us read. You see, huh? Exodus 12 to Exodus 12 to Emmanuel, brother, can you read Exodus 12 to Exodus 12 to this month shall be unto you the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Ah, this shall be the beginning of the month. That is the first month for you. Which is this month? Read Exodus 13, 4, brother. Ah. Exodus 13, 4. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. Ah, month of Abib. Month of Abib or month of Nisan is the first month for uh, as per the Bible. But today we have January. No? Uh, how did uh, uh, this one came? Actually month of Nisan means it's actually month of April. But how did January come into existence? Uh, you see, actually the Jewish people were the one who had the calendar initially and they were commemorating the you see beginning of the year on month of April. So April is the Passover. They have to celebrate the Passover very grandly. So when they were uh, uh, Israel was destroyed, they were taken to captivity to Rome. You see, there also they began to celebrate uh, this Passover. And this one, you see, disturbed the Roman Emperor. So Roman Emperor, what did he do? Even in spite of telling to the Jewish people, nobody listened. Then you see. The emperor shifted uh, the beginning of the month from April to January. Why? Because his name was Generosus. So January and Genesis are very similar. So which is similar to his name, he shifted the beginning of the year to January. So hence what happened? You see, from April he went to January. But even after shifting it uh, officially also, the Jewish people still celebrated the Passover and the beginning of the year as Nisan, Abib or April. Hence, uh, you see, the emperor began to tease the Jewish people as saying April fools. This is how April fool actually came into existence. Fools, fools, fools. Uh, Jewish people, even after uh, implementing the law, they are doing the very foolish thing. You see, they are brethren. Anyway, now, uh, how did the people of uh, Israel celebrate the Passover? You see, please read this chapter, Exodus 12 chapter, after the class in your house. You see, here, the God had commanded that you take a lamb on the 10th day and to slay it on the 14th day. 10th day you need to take it and uh, keep it in the house till the 14th day and in the 14th day, in the evening, it has to be slayed. Read Exodus 12 chapter 3 and 6. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Exodus 12, 3 and 6, brother? 12, 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall 
take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Verse but 6. Hmm. Please. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Ah, kill it when? Not in the morning. Kill it in the evening. So, dear brethren, this is exactly fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Jesus entered Jerusalem 14th day. He was there in Jerusalem for three days, cleansed the temple. Then on a 14th day, he was supposed to be slain in the evening. So, when did Jesus die? Jesus died on the cross in the evening, not early morning. You see? Huh? So, Jesus died from, you see, huh? 12, you see, morning 9 o'clock till evening 3 o'clock he was on the cross. 6 hours Jesus died on the cross. Okay. So, 3 p.m. is actually evening, not uh, morning. Therefore, dear brethren, huh? that lamb, how was the lamb? It was to be very clean lamb, a holy lamb. You see, huh? correct now, without any blemish. So, similarly, did Jesus have any sin? No, Jesus did not have any sin in him. He was a sinless person, holy, harmless, separate from sinners. You see, and how was the lamb to be cut? What they had to do? They had to put the blood on the doorpost. So similarly, dear brethren, you see, uh, our Jesus is the Passover lamb. You see, uh, the Passover lamb, not even a bone should be broken. So Jesus, none of the bones were broken. His blood has to be sprinkled upon our hearts to be saved. Then only we will be saved from the angel of death that is going to pass over. Now who is going to be saved first? The firstborn. So similarly, we the firstborn of the church are going to be saved. Dear brethren. So, dear brethren, you see, and uh, there was a particular way to eat also. You see, they had to eat with bread and bitter herbs. Uh, let us read this verse, Exodus 12, 8. Exodus 12, 8. Peter, brother, can you read? Okay. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Very good. See, they shall eat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You see, you say bitter herbs means it will increase our appetite. So similarly, the bitter experiences which increases our appetite to understand and grasp more and more, eat more and more of Jesus. Now, how they have to eat? Not casually, relaxedly. No. They have to be very tip-top ready. You see, they have to huh, put their sandals. You see, they have to huh, put their clothes upon, gird their lions keep their walking stick ready as if they are to be going for a journey. Read Exodus 12.11. Exodus 12.11, brother. Imagine, brother. Exodus 12.11. Mm. Exodus 12.11. And thus shall he eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Ah, it is Lord's Passover. Eat it in haste. Similarly, we are going to the heavenly canon. We need to eat it in haste. You see, David then, therefore, this is the Passover meal. Now, when did Jesus die? Jesus died on Friday. And when was the Jesus resurrected? You see, Jesus was resurrected on a Sunday. So, that day when Jesus died was actually a Friday. You see? Now, every year will it come on Friday? Tell me. Every year will it come on Friday? Huh? See, your birthday. You see? Huh? If you are born on a, a Friday, does it come every day on a Friday? No. Every year, that day changes. But here, our Christians fix the date for a good Friday because they want particularly Jesus died on a Friday. Where did Jesus tell to, you see, uh, remember that uh, day? No, Jesus told to remember his death the day of Bhutan. See, therefore, it has to be done in a proper way, yearly once. Therefore, Apostle Paul 
correcting this mistake of the church only, he writes to Corinthians. Eh? Now let us read these verses again. Now we will clearly understand. Imagine, brother, please read 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 27 to 31. One by one, we will read and go, brother. Huh? 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat, eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, Onwardly shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Ah, therefore, Apostle Paul says, be very careful. What you are doing is remembering the lost death. So, if you are doing it in an unworthy manner, taking whenever you want, let it be yearly, monthly, huh? or weekly, huh? it is a very improper way. It has to be done only yearly, not weekly, not monthly, not daily. It should be done in a worthy manner. You see, so whosoever eat it in an unworthy manner. What did Apostle Paul say? Continue, brother. But let a man... Huh? In verse 28, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Ah, first let him examine. Study first. Okay? Everybody thinks that he should examine himself. Huh? If we examine ourselves as we sinners or not, we will come to an answer and conclusion that we are sinners only. Then we should not take out. We should never touch that one. We are sinners. Jesus died for the sinners. What did Jesus say? You see, huh? the physician is required for a, you see, huh? for a patient. A doctor is required for a patient. So, we are sinners, hence we required a savior. Jesus came in search of a sinner only. We don't need to examine ourselves whether we are sin or not. We are sinners. We need to examine whether we are doing it in a proper way, biblical way, yearly once or not. Let examine, study. Very clearly it's given in the Bible. That was the Passover, what Jesus did. So we have to do it yearly. Continue with the next. Huh? Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Hmm. He that uh, eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation. You see, dear brethren, therefore, uh, Apostle Paul said, but this cause many are weak, not, not literally weak, not literally sick, spiritually weak, uh, spiritually sick. Not alert, not attentive in the Lord. Very sleeping. Very drowsy Christians. You see, therefore Apostle Paul says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged by the Lord. Therefore, dear brethren, this has to be done yearly. On the month of Nisan, you see, on Nisan 13, you see, the Passover one day before, Jesus did not, he died as a Passover land, but one day before he celebrated this memorial. So similarly, we need to celebrate this memorial yearly once and when? Morning. No, night, dear brethren, after sunset, supper has to be taken. Dear brethren, you see, our Lord Jesus never requested us anything. He never did request any symbol. He did not even request water from us. You see, huh? he told, this do in remembrance of me. But today, this basic simple thing, you see, our Christians find it very difficult to obey. Dear brethren, we need to be obedient to the word of God. When the word of God says that you should be like this, it is very simple to be like that. It's only that we don't let it go. It is because of our ego, because of our prejudice mind, because of prefixed mind, dear brethren. You see, how much time it will take to obey our Lord? Surrender to Him. You know, therefore, Apostle Paul says there are two cups. Read 1 Corinthians 10, 20 to 21. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Stephen, brother, can you read? First Corinthians 10, 21. He cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. He cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Hmm. You see, there are both are there. You see, the cup of the Lord, the cup of the devil. 
cup of the lord has to be taken with us cup of the devil when we want to can take it the devil doesn't matter at all you see the lord's table is there devil's table is there devdan so its decision is up to us whether we are pleasing the lord whether we want to please the lord want to please men but jesus said this do in remembrance of me with desire i have a desire to eat this passover with you jesus never requested one thing devdan this simple thing you see there is a thought you see there is a prob no a dying man request has to be you see considered our jesus is dying request only one request read finally luke 22 15 luke 22 15 peter brother or emmanuel brother can you read luke 22 15 luke 22 15 hmm. and he said unto them with desire i have desired to eat this passover with you before i suffer ah with desire i have desired to eat this uh, huh? passover underline passover was the thing what jesus did the new passover not kill the little lamb because jesus himself was the lamb not literally put the blood because jesus blood has to be accepted uh, you see but instead of uh, eating the meal we are eating the bread you see and drinking the wine that is the new meal dear brethren this is the meaning of the lord's uh, memorial supper okay please go to the notes i'll be sending the notes uh, and the youtube link any doubts any questions anybody has you can please ask anybody has got any doubts any questions brother peter brother thank you brother so wonderful session thank you very much lord bless lord bless praise the lord uh, stephen brother peter brother any questions thank you okay emmanuel brother any doubts any questions brother uh emmanuel brother no doubts no brother i will let you know if later okay please sure don't hesitate <clears throat> any questions any doubts you have please ask i'll be sending the notes please go through the notes please study it okay